Coming up on Techzilla, last minute stocking stuffers for geeks, traveling with electronics, how to keep them from getting trashed at the airport. GPU mayhem, Lloyd Case is here to help you buy your next graphics card and why you might already own the perfect set-top box. So unwrap your tamales and pour on that hot sauce, cause Techzilla starts now. This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Belkin. Unleash your network. Sony. Go to revision3.com slash Sony for an inside look at the latest Sony gear and games. And Verizon 4G LTE, the fastest, most advanced 4G network in America. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to Techzilla. Hands-on reviews of the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you've already got. Whether you're a beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or the best way to dispose of that 300-pound fruitcake, we got an answer for you. The annoying neighbors. Oh, toss it at them? Hmm, I have a neighbor problem. We need to think of some creative solutions. <laughs> Fruit cakes and rocket engines. Yes. Greetings, beloved Texilla viewers. It is our last episode before the Christmas mayhem. There is not a ton of news. We're waiting to hear how the FCC rolls on net neutrality or rolls over net neutrality the day after we tape this show. Yes, and Google has apparently decided that Google TV is actually in beta. It is in beta. <laughs> They're like, okay, yeah, beta. We'll slap it on there. Uh, the New York Times uh, says that the search giant has asked TV makers to delay the launch of Google TV powered TVs until well after CES, even though Sony and Logitech Google TV products are already out. Apparently, like LG and Toshiba and Sharp are yeah. like, squeeze us? Well, I know. They were going to make some big announcements, I think, at CES, and now um, they have to put the kibosh on that. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting one to watch. And, and while we know none of you are frantically driving around your part of the world doing your Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve. Yeah, I finished mine on Amazon back in September. So really? I'm good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Really, you? I did. I did. Okay. I got way ahead this year. I was like, the second I knew what people wanted, it, I was like, boop, 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 Amazon Prime. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> the hard well, part was keeping track of it while I was packing everything and moving it to the new place. That could be a little terrifying. That was a little tricky. Should you not be as organized as Ms. Belmont, we have some last minute stocking stuffers ideas for geeks just in case, like Radio Shack and Sam's Club having iPhone 4s for 149 or 147 bucks, assuming they aren't all sold out. And Did not know that Radio that. Shack sold iPhones. <laughs> apparently that. do, and Sam's Club. And Sam's Club. That, I'm not too surprised by that one, but the Radio Shack Costco surprised me. Probably. I know all of those prices are significantly less than I paid for mine. Yeah. Um, a phone might be a little bit pricey, though, for our whole last minute shopping uh, stocking stuffers guide for geeks. Uh, this is stuff that you won't need to wait weeks for it to ship. Something you can pick up on your way from the airport, you know, train station, or on your way home from work. Uh, flash drives. Everyone needs a flash drive. Everyone needs a thumb drive. And if there's a, you know, Walgreens or other 24 hour convenience store, drugstore mm -hmm. open near you, they probably have a few behind the counter. Yeah. We take them for granted because we get about 100 of them at trade shows every year and they're just kind of like piling up in my house but some people actually need to purchase them and they're good to have yeah thumb drives you can back up sd mm -hmm. cards for your cameras compact flash for the big cameras um rechargeable batteries um Heck yeah. if should you still have devices that take double a AA and triple a's get rechargeable batteries for them basically you buy somebody a toy get them rechargeable batteries the big box hardware stores lowe's home depot stuff like that usually have really good prices on them yeah and led flashlights they are fun and practical led flashlights are handy tools to have in your home or your car, your purse, your backpack, wherever you might need to find something in the darkness and all of a sudden. And toddlers love them. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and you can shine them in the eyes of your cat. No, don't do that. Don't shine them in the eyes of your cats. To make them glow. <laughs> <laughs> you can find some inexpensive packs on sale at most hardware or electronics stores. Uh, Lowe's usually has them in stock. Sure, um, Lowe's the carries Surefires. surefires. If yeah. you want to get somebody the fancy, like, I can knock down a steel door with this flashlight yeah. flashlight. Oh yeah. Surefire. Nerd tools, four in one or jeweler screwdrivers. If there is one constant in PC technology, in all technology over the years, it's the Phillips head screw, which means any true geek has a need for at least one handy screwdriver. Basically, there's like four in ones, there's like, there's two sides, and they, I, sh I should have brought oh, mine on the set. Well, iFixit has a great pack too, so if you yes. do have some time to get your shipping on, then check out iFixit because they have a nice little tool kit that you can yeah. buy that will basically have have screw heads for every size screw imaginable. Well, jeweler screwdriver, 
members if you if you don't have time to wait for iFixit right. to show up. And this is the day before Christmas. Yeah, Run you probably don't have time. Run to hardware store. Tor actually, like, again, homes in, in uh, Home Depot, Lowe's usually have really nice multiple set jeweler screwdrivers, both for Phillips and straight slot and Torx drivers, which can be super useful. If you want to be the super cool friend, look at your local hardware store for the giant, like, 347 pack of, like, security tips. Mm. And that'll allow your friends or neighbors or children to open up any secure piece of electronics in your home. And then one that I always find at the airport when I'm traveling to and from home is travel plug adapters. If you have to go overseas, if you're going to Europe, if you're going to Japan, these gifts. travel plug gifts adapters. Well, some, your family might travel. There you go. And if you're at the airport already. Apparently Veronica wants travel power adapters for yeah, Christmas. I can never find them when I need them, so I always buy them at the airport. And don't forget, not just the, the cell phone, the laptop, the other portable electronics. Well, as I've mentioned on the show a million times before, my trick is to get a little um, a little tiny travel power strip mm -hmm. and then use the adapter with the power strip and then that way I can plug all my electronics into the regular Especially if there's that one plugs. person that camped out at the gate four hours for everybody else. You can be yeah, like, I have you can a, be that nice guy. That turns the one outlet into mm -hmm. four. Hey, if you can find them with a pair of decent headphones or earbud clips or holders with cable management on the low end, cost is pretty good. Uh, a lot of the Sony stuff is pretty good. Yeah, they've got cute little clips too that you can wrap your cables around and that's good for, for traveling. I, I'm moving into traveling realm because the holidays for me just mean traveling. You're traveling back east, aren't you? I'm going you? back to Connecticut, yes. Like on what, Christmas Eve? No. <laughs> Not quite that close. Not quite, quite that close. Oh, another one though, uh, downloadable software. Always appropriate. If your if your family member is a gamer or if they like music, you can send them some you know coupons for Steam. Just buy them, gift them the the game, and then they can download it at their leisure. Cool. Or you can purchase an application, send them the registration number mm -hmm. for that. Now, don't keep it yourself, but give it to them. Phone applications, um, you know, iTunes makes it really easy to give uh, uh, applications and, and you know movies and yeah, music away, mm -hmm. which actually makes me think of gift cards. Gift cards is always a good one, and you can usually find yeah. them at places like Walgreens or CVS too, for all sorts of different retailers. Well, Safeway, which is the big supermarket chain on the West Coast, they usually have end caps that are like hundreds of yeah. gift cards. iTunes, Best Buy, Amazon.com, uh, Newegg, they all do gift cards you can give to people. Or make a donation in someone's name for a charity. Uh, Heifer International is amazing, and of course, Charity Water, who we've been supporting here at Revision 3. Mm -hmm. And finally, I suggest offering up five hours of free tech support for your friends and family. It's always nice when you go home to give them a helping hand out to people. Use your expertise to uh, make someone's holidays a little easier. And it also draws a really nice line so they don't call you up and spend two hours talking to you every exactly. other day for the first Five three hours. months of the year. That's all you get. <laughs> That's all you get until 2012. <laughs> well, Lloyd Case is up next with our last GPU shopping guide of the year. But before we get to that, we want to thank everyone for the amazing donations to Charity Water. We've raised almost $8,000. We've almost dug two wells. So whether you've donated a dollar or 500, you are awesome. Thank you so much. Making someone's life a lot better. Don't have any cash to spare but want to help the Charity Water cause? Do us a huge favor. Go to revision3.com slash Ford Focus and vote for Techzilla at the bottom of the page. You'll help us raise 20000 for Charity Water on Techzilla's behalf. That's four wells. And uh, we, we might get to go to Spain to drive the new 2012 Ford Focus. Want to make 10000 for a charity of your choice and win a chance to drive the new Focus on a test track in Madrid with us? Create a video, all the details at revision3.com slash Ford Focus, then submit it to the Global Drive section of facebook.com slash Ford Focus. Check it out, people, and thank you so much for your support of Charity Water over the holiday season. It's time to thank one of our sponsors that makes Texilla happen, Sony. Sony and our friend and fellow rev 3 Anthony Carboni, put together a little something for our show. And if you like what you see, check out the full segment at revision3.com slash Sony. That's revision3.com slash Sony to watch the full segment and join in the discussion. Hey guys, Anthony here for Sony, and if you shoot a lot of video on your DSLR, you're probably curious about Sony's NEX VG10. It's the world's first consumer HD camcorder with interchangeable lenses. And instead of showing you commercial about it, I decided to take it to Ryan Connolly, the host of Film Riot. He shot one of his short films for his show with the VG10 and sat down with me to share his impressions of the camera. To see the full segment, head to revision3.com slash Sony. CES is around the corner and we're sure there'll be big announcements from AMD and NVIDIA, but 
for a few weeks, you should be able to breathe easy about upgrading your graphics card with any cash you got over the holidays. Or can you? It seems like there's always another GPU coming around the corner. Lloyd Case has got the best LAN party setup of any house I've ever seen and uh, gets his GPU benchmarking on for maximum PC, has the word on the latest round of GPUs. Should we start with the unlimited budget? I have more money than I need. I must have the most ultimate game performance well, now. Yeah, well, that's probably this guy. The GTX $540. This is the uh, EVJ super clocked version, so it's a little bit overclocked, maybe it's 5%. Hefty. It's, it's hefty. It's got 1.5 gig of RAM. How's the power consumption on this monster? Uh, you, on my 850 watt system, it sucks f almost 400 watts on the full load. <laughs> Sorry, that's that's a pretty big power draw. Now that's a full. That's when it's you know doing a lot of stuff, right. admittedly. But yeah, and actually that's more efficient in terms of frame rate than the 480 was. So it's an improvement and faster performance. It's the complete chip now. You remember how mm -hmm. Nvidia ships sort of an incomplete chip with the 480? You know, some stuff turned off. This has got everything turned on. It's working right now. Can I do I want to run two of those in parallel or if you got a 1200 watt power supply? Sure. <laughs> so finally, you're the person that needs a 1200 watt power supply. ATI Radeon, or I should say AMD Radeon HD 6970, yeah. flirting with the 580, but not quite. Not quite. Surpassing. Yeah, they're more equivalent to what NVIDIA's uh, GTX 570 is, sort mm -hmm. of their one down from the top. The 6970 is. The interesting thing about these cards, though, the 6970 and 6950, is they're basically almost two complete 6870 GPUs on one chip. Whoa. Now, the, the, where they fall, kind of fall down is sort of at the raster end, but mm -hmm. all the compute engines and stuff are basically double a 6870 and a 6850. A pretty nice price advantage for the 69s. You, you basically give up power, but you yep. give up a lot of, you, you spend a lot less for a 6970. Yeah, this is $380 roughly for the XFX version of the 6970. The 6850s running for uh, right around 300 Would you rather have two 6950s or one GTX 580? Uh, I think I'd rather have two 6950s <laughs> if I had to choose. This is telling About people. But the same power draw. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still amazed at how the cards are finally scaling after years of waiting for... Right. I think uh, AMD has some driver work to get in, because this thing should be performing better than it actually does, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I like that thought. What's your pick between 300 and 400? Would that be the 6950? Um, the, well, between 300 and 400, it's a really a kind of a toss-up mm -hmm. between the GTX 570 and the 6970. The 570 is a little cheaper, mm -hmm. around, around 350. 360, and this is about 380, like I said, for the FXFX, FX, and maybe 370 for other models. How about the, the classic 200 to $300 price range? This guy comes in between 190 and $220 or so. It's the ASUS uh, GeForce GTX 460, what they call their uh, direct copper version, because it's got this direct copper heat sink on it. I like it. They clock this 100 megahertz over the default clock. So it's actually a lot better than most GTX 40s out there, 460s out there, excuse me, that's and uh, performs pretty well. That's a pretty good deal. Is it? A, are they, all these relatively quiet, or do we have these sort of screaming fans? Oh, uh, they've done a lot of work. These are all the, the Asus card tends to be a little noisy. They are, remember overclocking this mm -hmm. at 100 megahertz, which is like almost 15 percent over default. That's big. So it gets a little noisy when you really load it up. These two are not too bad. They, I would actually give the edge to noise to Nvidia's card design, mm -hmm. cooler design, but neither of them get obnoxiously loud like the old 480. Did. That's a big plus. How about under 150 bucks? say you need a cheap card for entry-level gaming or something to offload your Blu-ray processing on a home theater PC? Well, what you want to do is you look around for one of two cards. Uh, NVIDIA's got their GTS 450, mm -hmm. which is a pretty nice chip, and there's a number of people making cards of that. And then uh, AMD hasn't really updated it. They've got the HD 5770, which is still based kind of on their first-generation DirectX 11 chip. Uh, so it does a fine job. I would say that 3D performance leans a little bit towards the NVIDIA part, but mm -hmm. sort of overall quietness and power consumption leans towards the AMD. What about, uh, you know, like special low-profile cards for smaller cases or stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, you think, you know, if I go to an entry-level card, I get to save money. But really, <laughs> if you're building a home theater PC, particularly in a low-profile or small form factor case, you're still going to spend between $100 and $150, but they, that effort goes into building those special low-profile cards with really quiet coolers. Mm -hmm. Or in the case of XFX, they have a single-wide uh, 5770, which is kind of unique. That is really nice. I like that thought. So CES around the corner, Consumer Electronics Show, always a lot of PC stuff there. Anything you're kind of excited? Excited to see? Yeah, Intel's going to roll out Sandy Bridge. And uh, the interesting thing from the graphics, it's their new CPU design, mm -hmm. right? 32 nanometer quad core. They haven't had a quad core part at 32 nanometer yet. Uh, what's interesting about that is their graphics core. Not so much the 3D part, which is still based on their old stuff, but they've really done a lot of tweaks to the video engine. It should be interesting to see how well that performs with Blu-ray and stuff like that. Well, hopefully we'll catch up with Lloyd at CES to get his call on Sandy Bridge. We're obviously waiting to buy a notebook until we see Sandy Bridge. Lloyd, awesome stuff as always. 
Thanks. MaximumPC.com. Where else can we find your work? Uh, PC World mm -hmm. and, of course, my own blog, Improbable Insights, which I've actually been updating recently. I like that thought. Yeah. <laughs> it's good because you were, you were, well, you know, you, I, I know that feeling where you're like, don't update a blog or, or you stop actually having a blog because you're working too much. Right. I like this. ImprobableInsights.com, people. Lloyd Case, awesome stuff as always. Still to come, why the best home theater set-top box might already be in your living room. But first... It's time to thank one of our sponsors, Verizon 4G LTE. With wireless speeds that are up to 10 times faster than 3G, Verizon's 4G LTE means you get reduced lag time and increased real-time responsiveness. Experience video conferencing without jitter or stutter, stream videos without that annoying buffering, and download a song in just four seconds. But that's not all. Verizon's 4G LTE also means fast upload speeds. 10 megabyte PowerPoint presentations can be uploaded in less than 25 seconds and photos in just six seconds. Verizon's 4G LTE gives you wireless options for a previously wired world. So untether yourself from wired networks and check out Verizon's 4G LTE today. Unleash your network. Let's talk better streaming video brought to you by Belkin Routers. Everybody's talking set-top boxes, Roku, Boxy, Popcorn Hour, Pop Box, home theater PCs, V-Beam, TiVo, whatever that thing is that comes from your cable company. All too often. Oh my goodness. A pile of stuff. <laughs> and all too often people forget that they already have an awesome set-top box in their living room, although I'll bet you'll find what we're going to be talking about on Veronica's giant spreadsheet of set-top boxing that is being group sourced on the internet as we speak. we got a link to that in the show notes. It's a giant spreadsheet, like a Google Doc, with, like, with every set-top box people can find and as much information on the specs as possible. I'm fascinated. <laughs> she got other people to do her Techzilla homework <laughs> for her. <laughs> hey, crowdsourcing at its finest. But let's talk about the PS3 and the Xbox 360. The hidden set-top boxes, which Game are more consoles. like side of your set boxes. Yeah, near definitely. your set boxes. They are in there. <laughs> hey, and nothing against the Wii, but it's standard definition, which it doesn't look as good on an HD TV. It sucks on an HD TV. It's so much. If it wasn't as fun as it is, yes, I would agree with you. But please, Nintendo, bring the Wii out in high def, please. And if you have a Wii and you want it to look better on your HD TV, Mr. Heron would advise you to score the component cables, which will one, enable 480p output, and two, clear up the details in the background compared to that little yellow composite cable that it's, you've been It's using. night and day on the Wii. If yeah. you have an HD TV and, and a Wii, get the component cable for it. It's six bucks if you shop around online. No excuses. One of the things, though, talking about the big game consoles, right. the PS3 and the Xbox 360, the performance of the console itself, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a relatively fast hardware system. So when, in the case of say the PS3 like I have at home, when it connects to my network storage, I'm able to just scroll through really quickly right. all my content, and it's kind of fun actually. They have this crossbar media interface in the PS3, and some people love it or hate it, but one nice thing is if you've got a long list of stuff, it's kind of fun to go <laughs> just watch it zip through a big long list of files pretty quickly. And that's it's, a, it's always nice. It's a good thing. A lot of the a lot of the set-top boxes, uh, especially the ones that are a little long in the tooth at this point, they have older processors, less powerful processors that may or may not do 1080p video. And if they haven't spent a bunch of time, if the people who built it haven't spent a bunch of time tweaking the operating system in the interface, they can be painfully slow as you switch from mode to mode. I gotta say though, I, I personally think because it has an onboard Blu-ray player and it no longer requires the stupid CD to play Netflix, I think the PS3 has the advantage of the two. True. And of course, both have wireless net. Well, right. you have to buy wireless networking for the Xbox if you want mm -hmm. it. But at least they released an N adapter recently, so that made a lot <laughs> of people really happy. Uh, the old PS3s used to have media card readers in them too, but that's that feature has been long gone, eliminated. Uh, I love as a Blu-ray player, it is one of the finest disc mm -hmm. players I've ever used in terms of compatibility and performance. It just it will load the disc quickly. So the Xbox 360, it is a Windows Media Center extended device, so it'll look for your nice. Windows Media Center. The PS3 is a DLNA device, which means you want to have some type of server, DLNA-compatible server set up. Um, and one of the nice things about the cool DLNA servers is that they will take your media collection, whatever it happens to be, whatever formats you've downloaded or purchased or created, and it will transcode them on the fly. It basically will grab the data off the hard drive, smirch the movie into a compatible format, then spit it out on the network to your PS3. Um, That's the main limitation. I see with using the console is the yeah. format support. It's fairly the limited lack, for yeah, each The one. minimal codec list, especially yeah. on Sony's case. So, it, it, and then that requires basically having a system in the background taking care of that transcoding right. for you. So you can throw anything at it and not have to worry about recoding all your video to some specific format. 
PS3 media server is kind of the classic one that, that Mr. Heron uses a lot. Uh, Diversity is another popular one. And one of our viewers says the best one out there, period, it does cost a little bit of money, like 30 bucks, is Mesmo. Um, he basically liked it because it just worked with his files and his, in this case, his Blu-ray player. And if you haven't thought about it, if you haven't recently purchased Blu-ray player or HDTV, it may have the ability to you know, access you know, Netflix or Vudu or Amazon Video On Demand or any of another of services or play DLNA stored stuff on your network, your media collections you have stashed away on a media server or a PC somewhere in your house. Exactly. So think about the hidden set-top boxes before you go out and purchase an additional box. You might have what you need already sitting there in the living room. Just take a look and make sure you've updated the firmware on all your devices, including your HDTV. You'll be happier. Good job. Hey, coming up next, we got some, well, viewer questions for you, but we want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Belkin, for giving us a chance to talk streaming video and making it better with you today. Belkin's Play N600 wireless router has the power to stream HD video seamlessly to all your devices anywhere in your home. The Play N600 does more than connect your devices, it makes them better. Game systems turn into media players, printers print without wires, hard drives become wireless servers. It even finishes downloading large files to a hard drive at home after you've shut down your computer or taken it with you. Check it out, people. Belkin.com slash unleash. Like Ms. Belmont, Ben will soon be making a cross-country flight and wrote in this question. I'm flying cross-country and I want to take my PS3 Slim, but I don't really have the money for a PS3 carrying case. Would putting the system in its wires in a large duffel bag surrounded by clothes survive the baggage handling process? I heard they call these guys baggage throwers. Love the show. Ben in Connecticut. Oh, you Ooh, should have a meetup. Little party. Party. PS3 party in With Connecticut. Ben. Uh, uh, I fly with expensive electronic <laughs> stuff all the time. Whenever possible, I carry it on the yeah. plane with me. I'm going to say, I don't even know what you're going to say, but I'm going to say <laughs> categorically, do not put that in checked luggage. Right. And it, do, it, just don't do it. It, it, the truth is Don't we're less worried about it getting broken than it getting stolen. I'm equally worried about both. Okay. I would say equally worried about both. It also occurs to me, I have, I have a lot of larger clothes than you did, so it's easy for me to yeah. bury electronics inside of my giant clothes because my clothes are all larger than yours. That's true. Um, that's true. You know, I would say, look, I would, I would throw the PS3 in a backpack or a carry-on bag, whatever, mm -hmm. put all the cables for it in your check-in bag. Um, if you can't carry it on board with you, wrap it in a sweatshirt or a sweater or something big, fluffy, and soft, and then tuck that inside another sweater or sweatshirt, and then cocoon it. Basically, pack all of your clothes in the bottom and sides of your duffel bag and kind of put the PS3 in the middle of it and put more clothes on top and put some really nasty, dirty laundry right on top of it to discourage theft. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but literally, like, if you can, whenever possible, if it's expensive and, and possibly breakable or possibly fensible, stealable, desirable, don't check it in the plane. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's something you can't live without or something that you really want don't to use going check forward. It in the don't hold. check it. Yeah. And also, always bring an extra pair of undies and socks <laughs> and a toothbrush with you because if all your clothes get lost, you'll at least have clean underwear and clean breath mm -hmm. while you're trying to find a hotel on Christmas Eve after they don't send your luggage with That's you. That's going to be me. I know it. <laughs> I just know it. But you're going home for Christmas. So I have that to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> we got this question from P who asks. So I'm looking to jump on the SSD bandwagon, that's solid state drive, and I currently have a 500 gigabyte hard drive in my MacBook Pro unibody I got in late 2009. There is no way I can afford an SSD that size, but I've heard it's possible to sacrifice the optical drive in my laptop for a second drive caddy. Do you have any experience with this? Could you suggest any decent small capacity SSDs, secondary disk caddies that are compatible with Apple MacBooks? P in the UK. Roger was fascinated by this question. I'm also fascinated by this question. Read on. Okay, well unfortunately <laughs> with the trend towards smaller and lighter notebooks means a dual hard drive base or something of a rarity unless you want a big honking desktop replacement. Yeah. For MacBook users, we'd say you're SOL, but you're not. Hmm. Um, yes, this was very interesting, I thought. The Mac heads over at Other World Computing or OWC in forum lingo have what you want. They call it the data doubler. It's essentially a bracket that fits the optical drive bay with mounting points for 2.5 
five notebook drives, which is really nice. They even sell combo deals where they sell you the data doubler along with a hard drive or SSD. Uh, the thing is, though, you'll need to access the drives of your Mac, which means opening up your machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which if you're comfortable with, then you're pretty good to go if you have any experience with that. Um, OWC even includes instructional videos on their site if you're unsure of how to go about it. Our producer, Roger, as we mentioned, has had great luck buying from them, and they do ship internationally, which is nice. Uh, make sure you have the right tools and everything all in place before you start, you know, futzing around. Before with you rip the heart out of your MacBook. Together. Exactly. Oh, and of course, um, back up your data first. You never know what might happen. It's mm -hmm. always good to be on the safe side. And uh, yeah. I, I really want to know how this whole project turns out. So you should write back and let us know if you if you do end up getting all that done. Imagine having like an SSD drive and 500 gigabytes of storage in a MacBook. Oh, that would be cool, too, because you could use the SSD for your for, for booting. And it'll just be like, bam, on. Then you have access to and all that extra drive entire, space as well. Yeah. 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 We like that idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Finally. Uh, I'm still there. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, we got some feedback about our advice that we gave to a viewer in 175 about Apple Airport and Time Machine. Gary writes in, having recently gone through this, I wanted to point out that the Airport Extreme does not support Time Machine. Apple's official support documents mentioned this. Um, I, too, remember that this was once possible and promoted by Apple. It appears that it was not reliable and they pulled the support. I feel wronged as this was why I purchased my Airport Extreme in the first place. I found this out on a great website about Time Machine. The site has great info about how to avoid any issues. Gary. I feel pain. Yeah. Because I had lame. not realized they pulled the support Yeah, for I didn't know that either because I don't have Time Capsule. I, and I avoid, I refuse to use Time Machine. I use Time Machine. Yeah, you're braver than I am. I know. <laughs> I think we're getting an Airport Extreme for the house. We'll see. Perhaps we'll get a time capsule, too. Maybe. Maybe we should get so. the gigantic Mac mini server thing that costs like $9,000. Nah. Nah? Nah. <laughs> For everybody watching, we love your questions, so email us. Techzilla at revision3.com. Tech help, product reviews, how-tos, you ask us, but we'll do it. You can find Techzilla at revision3.com slash techzilla, at facebook.com slash techzilla, at youtube.com slash techhd, and you can always ask us questions on Twitter. Yep, we got at Veronica, at Robert Heron, at Patrick Norton, and of course, at Techzilla. We want you to know how to find us, like at Tixilla at revision3.com, so you can ask us questions, like about stuff at CES, mm -hmm. or what ACTV to buy, or how to back up everything in your house. Tech out product reviews, how to's. We'll, you ask us, we'll do it, but we need your emails or video questions on YouTube. Don't send be shy, them send them in. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Barry Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Until next time, you've been watching. Over here. What? You're Barely. in your door slamming and your toilet flushing. We're not done with you yet, Mr. Studio Manager. Companies. Yep. My shower curtain. I got three hours of sleep last night. My shower, <laughs> my shower curtain, the inside one, has the same hole spaces. Yes. That's as the shower the curtain shower. liner. The liner yes. has the same hole spaces. As the one I bought. Let's from just CP2? let the world know I'm actually more domestic than you are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, big time. Big. There is not even a question in my mind. All right. I'm a woman child. But on the upside, I find delight in places other people don't. There you go. The small things. Three, two. Having re three. Speaking of annoying neighbors, fruitcakes. Oh. Wait, your fruitcakes make annoying neighbors? No, 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 you can fling them They're at so your docile. annoying neighbors. Um, I mean, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, I got you, that docile fruitcakes. That also fruit sounded cakes. bad. <laughs> that was not meant as a, any kind of derogatory term. I was thinking of the actual loaf of fruitcake. I, I, I was following right along.